Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Carter County Museum's Shots Felt Around the World, Maurice Hilleman and the Montana Origins of the Fight Against Pandemics, debut of our virtual exhibition. This exhibition is live at the Carter County Museum, starting this weekend, Memorial Day, all the way through October 1st, depending on the weather. There will also be another version of this exhibition at the brand new Carter County Healthcare Facility. The grand opening for that building will be during the days of 85 in August. We look forward to seeing you in Ecolaca soon. My name is Sabre Moore, the Executive Director of Carter County Museum. I would like to begin by thanking everyone that has been part of this project, including the many teachers that we have worked with and my advisor at Montana State University, Dr. Robert Rydell. Dr. Rydell had the following opening remarks for this event. I want to join in welcoming everyone to the opening of this exhibit. Let me be clear, it would not have happened without the work of Sabre Moore and the dedicated staff and volunteers of the Carter County Museum. We should be proud of what they have accomplished. Maurice Hilleman certainly would be. Like Hilleman, this exhibit defies stereotypes and cuts across grains. How many people associate Montana with the history of vaccine development? How many know the Hilleman story of hard knocks, a love for science, and commitment to saving the lives of millions around the globe. This exhibit invites us to take a breath, a deep breath, and appreciate an at-risk child from rural Montana that could imagine and embark on a journey of scientific discovery that would change the world. The Carter County Museum is excited to announce the debut of Shots Felt Round the World, Maurice Hilleman and the Montana Origins of the Fight Against Pandemics exhibition on, in the Central Schoolhouse Gallery on Main Street in Ecolaca, Montana. Considered by many to be the father of modern vaccines, Dr. Maurice Hilleman made it his life's mission to eradicate childhood diseases. During his career, he created over 40 vaccines, including eight of the 12 commonly given to children today. He is credited with saving more than a billion lives around the globe. From his birth in Miles City to his time studying microbiology at Montana State College and beyond, Dr. Hilleman's origins in Montana provided the foundation for his incredible work ethic and family values. Despite his many accomplishments, Dr. Hilleman was a humble man and did not seek out recognition for his work. As such, few know of him or his contributions to the field of vaccines. Schatz seeks to change that by reestablishing his connection to Eastern Montana and inviting visitors to discover the process of scientific inquiry and vaccine development. For tonight's program, you'll hear from a number of individuals, including teachers from the local Ecolaca schools, Angie Weikert, representing Museum of the Rockies, and Dr. Zahava During, who will be giving a special presentation on Smithsonian's Vaccines and Us initiative. We look forward to seeing you in Ecolaca soon, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Carter County Museum. I am standing here on the deck of the schoolhouse, which is where our exhibit shots felt round the world. Maurice Hilleman and the Montana origins of the fight against pandemics is located. Here's the view of the schoolhouse. It was a one room schoolhouse in service to this community from 1920 to 1963. Some of our board members wives do remember attending school in here. As you come into the schoolhouse, we have a very handy screen to keep bugs out and other unwanted visitors like cats. Here's the exhibit. We begin with a title panel and then a few panels that discuss Maurice Hilleman's life growing up in Eastern Montana from where he was born in Miles City to his time at Montana State College for his undergraduate degree and then off to the University of Chicago where he earned his degree in medicine. Some of the images that you see on these panels are from the Museum of the Rockies and their recent exhibition <laughs> or recent collection of photos that were donated there. Before continuing with the rest of the tour, I would like to draw your attention to our sponsors and other individuals that made this possible. We would like to specifically thank the Museum of the Rockies and the Hilleman family for their recent donation as well as the Office of the Vice President for Research and Economic Development and the American Studies Program at Montana State University, Rocky Mountain Labs Historical Collection at Montana Memory Project, Montana Newspapers, the Carter County Geological Society, 
and especially the generous donation of an anonymous donor to the Carter County Museum, which made the printing of these panels possible. You'll notice some beautiful art that are, provides the borders for the panels. That is done by Claire Jorgensen, who is our museum educator for the summer. And the illustration of Dr. Hilleman was done by Jen Hall, who was our marketing and communications coordinator. This panel, entitled My 14 Years, is directly taken from uh, Maurice Hilleman's book that he wrote as a freshman in high school. He entered it in the Eastern Montana Fair, and it's a little autobiography about the first 14 years of his life. Jen's added some fun illustrations of stories that he told, as well as some photos from the book itself. That is in the Museum of the Rockies Hilleman collection. Montana State University now has what's called the Maurice Hilleman Scholars Program, and that program is a four-year program of scholarships that enable innovators to come to Montana State University and also have leadership development ability. That project started in 2016, and if you want more information, you'll be able to access that website from our virtual tour on Matterport. The next couple of panels contextualize infectious disease in Montana, specifically smallpox, influenza, the 1918 pandemic, and measles, mumps, and rubella. In order to help make the local history section a bit more um, clear in our exhibit, we've included pictures of the different newspaper articles that were published at the time in the Ekalaka Eagle, in the popular newspaper, and then also from places like Big Timber and Dillon. Again, all of these articles are available on the Matterport exhibit. You'll be able to just click on them and actually view it and read them in their entirety. Over here, we have the Vaccines in Us poster that we did in collaboration with the Smithsonian's initiative that you'll hear more about later today. This was done by a sloth bear at the National Zoo. And the spread of the paint mimics the spread of COVID-19 if somebody were to cough. The next couple of panels focus on how vaccines work and vaccines yesterday and today, a short history about how they came about. Here we have a illustration by Jen Hall of Dr. Hilleman being vaccinated with the uh, experimental hepatitis B vaccine made from human blood. And one of the really fantastic things about Dr. Hilleman is he really made sure that vaccine safety was paramount in importance to his work. And that just shows him getting vaccinated himself. This panel about how vaccines work was done by Claire Jorgensen. She created all the fun and beautiful illustrations for it. And then we go into a little bit more detail on the different types of vaccines and how they're made. Again, on the Matterport version, the virtual version of this exhibit, we include links to a lot of different videos that go into more visual detail on how vaccines work. Here we have a poster that we submitted to the American Alliance of Museums 2021 conference. And it was done in conjunction with myself, Angie Weikert, representing Museum of the Rockies, Sharon Carroll, the local math teacher here at Carter County High School, Marty Guire, the local fourth grade teacher here at Ekalaka Elementary, and Chioko Hamill, our science teacher. Later on in this premiere, you'll hear a little bit from them about this fabulous curriculum that works in concert with this exhibit. Up next, we have a couple of panels about COVID-19 in Montana and vaccine development in Montana. The vaccine development in Montana spotlights in particular Rocky Mountain Labs. And these images are from the Montana Memory Project collection. And then at the bottom, Rocky Mountain Labs actually took that photo that you see of the coronavirus. Really fabulous work there. And they also helped come up with the 3D print of it as well. On this panel, we also endeavor to represent 
Montana's Native American tribes and their experience of COVID-19, and then also a little bit about vaccines. You'll notice these green circles on each panel, and those are different quotes from Dr. Hilleman and other scientists about subjects that relate to the panels. Here we have a couple of items from the Carter County Museum's medical collections. This is a Red Star medicine kit, and there is Dr. B.B. Sandy, who is a doctor at Carter County for many, many years and delivered many people. <laughs> And Claire created some fun exhibit panels about this medicine cabinet, which is really quite fabulous. We also have this really interesting baby incubator and some more panels by Claire there about how they worked. And then we shift into the history of Carter County and infectious disease in particular in Carter County, as well as public health. Again, we draw in some of the same subjects from the other panels, smallpox, 1918 flu, measles and mumps, and how that specifically affected the Ecolaca area and other parts of Carter County. The two newspaper clips on these panels are from our local newspaper, the Ecolaca Eagle, and the founding editor of which, Oscar Dahl, is the one who the Dahl Memorial Healthcare Association was named for. Oscar Dahl was a passionate advocate for public health and for the building of a hospital here in Carter County. And it really shows in the subjects he chose to cover. On these particular green bubble callouts, we have stories and quotes from Shifting Scenes, which is the history of Carter County, and how that history reflects the, the diseases that came through this area. A very interesting one is about Ekalaka who was the wife of David Russell and for whom the town is named. She was a Oglala Lakota woman and she was stricken by smallpox. And that was actually what ended up killing her and many of her family members. This is Dr. B.B. Sandy's granddaughter who ended up becoming a nurse and definitely ascribed her lifelong interest in healthcare to her grandfather. And down at the bottom here, we have a timeline that goes through healthcare milestones specifically related to Dahl Memorial Hospital when it was constructed in 1942. And then brings you up to the present day in 2018 when Carter County voted to pass a $15.1 million bond in support of a new building at the corner of East Park Street and Central Avenue in Ecolaca, Montana. Here's an architectural rendering of what that building looks like, and I'm happy to say that it does in fact look like that in person, and that will be open later this summer. There will also be a copy of this exhibit in that building for people to enjoy in perpetuity. Finally, we have a panel that talks about Maurice Hilleman's contributions to humanity. He was invited to become part of the Millennium Time Capsule in 1999, and he submitted six vaccines that changed <laughs> the livelihood of children, and it's really just amazing. These vaccines are responsible for saving over a billion people in the world. And that is the end of our exhibit. You are invited to click the link on this, in the comments on our Facebook page, as well as in the description of the film on YouTube, and you'll be able to explore this exhibit much more in depth. You will be able to read the panels as well as you can now, because we want you to come to Eagle Acre for that. But you will be able to view some really amazing multimedia enhancements, videos from different partners that are featured on the Vaccines and Us Smithsonian page, as well as some from the documentary that was done by um, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in order to talk about Hilleman's life. Finally, as you leave the exhibit, we have a series of posters that encourage people to, this is how you get rapid COVID testing in Ecolaca in Carter County. 
Here's how you can get vaccinated, call public health to make an appointment, and then free COVID-19 support for those that may have had some sort of stress in relation to COVID-19. We wanna make sure that those resources are available for people that come to this exhibit. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Zahava Dern. I'm happy to be here at the opening of shots felt around the world at the Carter County Museum. Saber Moore, your director, invited me and asked me to say a few words about the initiative of which I'm co-director, Vaccines and Us, cultural organizations for community health and how it links and relates to tonight's opening. So let me share my screen with you. The logic of this initiative is quite straightforward. We know from research and ourselves from our experience that the American public trusts cultural institutions and they are known to be pretty well at presenting information in a clear fashion that people can grasp and understand it. We also saw back in January considerable lack of confidence in the vaccines as they were rolling out. So we thought that we could leverage museums to help in this conversation about vaccination for us, for our families, and for our communities. The initiative has three aspects. There is a website, vaccinesandus.org, on which are all kinds of assets and resources that you can download. We have posters and you'll be hearing more about them in a moment. And we attend and sponsor events such as this one. Before going any further, I'd like to acknowledge the supporters, professional organizations around the country that have promoted this initiative. And in fact, a special call out is due the American Association for States and Local History, because it was through their promotion of the initiative that Sabre Moore, the director here, first heard about us. Let's talk for a moment about our website. This is the home page. And let's look at its various sections. We begin with a few words from Lonnie Bunch, the director, the secretary of the Smithsonian. Then we have six subject areas, science and vaccines and tools and resources and community challenges where we talk about the special problems and this resilience shown by different communities around the nation. Power of community is a section about what has happened around the country as various communities have faced the vaccine and a section on COVID-19 and history. It is here that this exhibition will reside. It's virtual, the virtual ex exhibit. And at the bottom of our homepage, we're proud to list the organizations that collaborated to make this all possible. Now, I've mentioned posters a couple of times, and the best way to talk about them is to show how they've been used. One example comes from a children's museum in Pennsylvania. They downloaded this poster drawn by a student at Baruch College in New York City and distributed it around their community. From the website, they downloaded two items, a short book for children under seven and a document that talks about activities for understanding 
COVID-19, its science, and how to stay safe. The reason they pick these two is that they're both available in over 20 languages, and that represents their community pretty much. Another use is a library in Michigan. They picked a poster called Let's Recover Together. And what they focused on in their conversation about vaccination was the hostility towards groups that happens in pandemics and of course happened in this one as well. What they used as a starter for the conversation is a recording on the website by Dr. Spencer Crew of his experience. And then of course, and there's this museum, the Carter County Museum. Yeah. I found and laughed when Saber picked this poster. She thought that it was appropriate. This poster was not drawn by a human, but rather was drawn by a sloth bear at the National Zoo. Yes, some of our posters were contributed by animals at the National Zoo. One of the things to my delight that I discovered tonight when I was looking at the virtual exhibit is there's a link inside the virtual exhibit to some material from our website. So those are a couple of ways that they've been used. But one of the things I want to emphasize is how each of you can partner with us. You can share content and you can submit a poster. We had posters submitted by youngsters as young as nine and by students as you saw. The other thing you can do is help us color the world with posters. As my colleague Amy Marino says, I challenge you, take one of the posters drawn by the sloth and put it up. Send us a snapshot, of course, of where it is in Ecoleca, Montana. Or suggest a personality for a PSA or a first person narrative. Perhaps you know someone with a good story about vaccines or vaccination. And perhaps you'd like to nominate yourself. We'd be very happy to record you. So those are some of the ways you can partner with us. To summarize, Vaccines and Us has three components. We have posters, we have a website, and there are events to attend or to host. But the big but is without people, none of this can happen because it's people that make it happen. And my question to you is, will you help us? We know you will. Welcome everyone. My name is Angie Weicker. I'm a PhD candidate in education at Montana State University in Bozeman, Montana, and I'm representing the Museum of the Rockies. I'm joined for this virtual poster session by my colleagues in Ecolaca, Montana, Sabre Moore, Executive Director of the Carter County Museum, Sharon Carroll, math teacher at Carter County High School, Chioko Hamill, science educator, and Marty Guire, third grade teacher at Ecolaca Elementary School. Montana State University, or MSU, is a land-grant university with a mission to serve all communities in our rural state. As part of this mission, Museum of the Rockies, or MOR, has been providing educational materials and programs to Montana communities for decades. In 2013, MOR became sister museums with Carter County Museum, or CCM, in Ecolaca, Montana. Our two museums joined together to increase outreach to rural students in the southeastern part of our state. Over the past several months, we have collaborated on a K-12 curriculum, Hilleman and Vaccines, Connecting Culture to Scientific Curiosity. This project shares objects and interpretation from the life of Maurice Hilleman, groundbreaking microbiologist and vaccine developer. Because Hilleman was born and raised in rural Montana, this project inspires curiosity in Montana's rural students and sparks interest in public health. You can read an overview of this curriculum on our virtual poster. The full curriculum is accessible and available through CCM's website, 
cartercountymuseum.org. For our short conversation today, I'll ask our team a few questions about their experience with this curriculum and this partnership. So to start our discussion, I'd like to ask Saber Moore, Executive Director of Carter County Museum, to share what motivated her and CCM to create this curriculum. Thank you, Angie. Wonderful introduction. A 2018 paper for the Walsh Center for Rural Health Analysis states, rural communities have remarkable strengths, assets, and rich cultures and histories that are often overlooked when developing strategies to improve health and equity in the United States. Carter County, Montana, for example, has a long history of support for healthcare and recently voted for a $15.1 million bond to construct a critical access hospital in our small town of 350 people. Set to open this summer, the Carter County Healthcare Facility will host an additional copy of Shots Felt Round the World, Marie Hellman and the Montana Origins of the Fight Against Pandemics. This exhibit operates in concert with the curriculum, providing a place conscious approach through the use of local collections, newspaper stories, and Dr. Hilleman's own background in the Eastern Montana town of Miles City. Igalaka, for those of you who don't know, is located also in Eastern Montana, about two hours south of Miles City. The Carter County Museum designed and produced the exhibit with the target audience of our rural town, as well as others in Montana who will host the exhibition in 2022. The museum partnered with Dahl Memorial Healthcare and our Teacher Advisory Council, who you see here, to invite their input on the exhibit and curriculum, contributing to its homegrown appeal. MOR provided images from the Hillman Collection and a research professor at Montana State University reviewed content for scientific and historical accuracy. This approach made the subjects of public health and vaccines more accessible, creating space for conversation and promoting greater health and literacy in the community. Back Great. To Angie. Yeah, thanks, Saber. So with that, let's turn towards our educators. Um, and I'll let you all jump in, maybe Sharon, you can start um, talking about our motivation to partner with a museum. So Sharon, what motivated you to work with Carter County Museum to develop this curriculum and use it in your classroom? Thank you, Angie. Um, students in this community begin to connect with the Carter County Museum as elementary students during the school year and with their families during the summer. Some of our high school students continue that connection throughout their high school years. A science research program at Carter County High School had connected with the math department for many years as students conducted research and analyzed the resulting data. The high school math and science department, in fact, here thrive on collaborative projects. In addition, our professional learning community is connected through a curriculum consortium based in Miles City. We routinely take advantage of the learning opportunities through this cooperative, and so um, thusly we've been able to establish strong connections to teachers in our region. Fantastic. You, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Um, Marty, how about you? What motivated you to partner with Carter County Museum on this curriculum? Well, I can't express how much Carter County Museum means to this community and to our school system. When Saber approached me to participate in this project, I couldn't jump at it fast enough. I am a native Mile Cityan, where Dr. Hilleman is from, and I was actually familiar with his work to some extent, but as I learned more about him, I was shocked that he was not as widely recognized for his amazing body of work. And I have watched with, I fully admit, just a little bit of jealousy as Sharon and Chioko worked with the museum on some other amazing projects like the Maya Project. But what really motivated me to want to work with the museum was what my students would gain from this partnership. This project really forced me to broaden my approach beyond my narrow focus of the textbook. Our museum has become one of the best hubs for learning in our community, and I'm excited just to be a small part of that. Awesome. Thank you, Marty. Uh, Chioko, same question to you. What motivated you to partner with Carter County Museum on this? Okay, well, I have to agree with um, Marty on it. I mean, our students gain so much by working with our museum. Um, Saver's been so welcoming to our school um, and she invites us to come to the museum for fossil day. Um, she lets us bring in any age group we want um, to study anything we like. Um, for me, primary sources are extremely special to our students. Um, so when we talk about the fossil record or dinosaurs, um, there's nothing like sitting in a room full of them. And we can do that at the Carter County Museum. 
Um, we're also able to identify fossil types when we go there. We don't just like talk about them from the textbook. We get a look at them and decide which ones are which, which is a greater experience for our students. Um, our students have also done Native American studies there. Um, they did archaeology research and they were trying to locate Ikalaka's actual home on her homestead. And so they partnered with the museum to do that. Uh, CCM and MOR brought a star lab to our school and invited all of us to join in. Um, and with a professional in the planetarium, it was magical for our students. Um, so when we collaborate with the Carter County Museum, we're connected to professionals in many fields like archeology, span Native American studies, paleontology, taxidermy and performing arts. Um, so being rural, it makes it difficult for our kids to experience this variety of professions. And it's hard for them to imagine moving into those fields unless they get to see these real people who do it. Um, the Carter County Museum is so well connected that by working with them, we give our students all of those experiences. This project is just another example of that. And I would join any project that Sabre invited me to be a part of. <laughs> So I'm gonna turn again to our three educators and ask you about your perceptions of the benefit and impacts of using museum curriculum in your classrooms. So Sharon, would you start? I'd be happy to. I've been piloting this um, particular curriculum um, about Maurice Hellman in grades, uh, for grades nine through 12. And I started it uh, several weeks ago. I am currently um, in the middle of a sophomore and senior implementation. Um, we are right now tracking herd immunity um, using the Montana State DPHHS um, tracker site. And um, we are actually now comparing vaccination rates in our county and in other counties in Montana. One of the graphs that I had students do was to compare um, the vaccination rates for our county and nine other counties. And I'm also having them compare the infection rates of our county. Um, and nine other counties. It inspires a great discussion about what herd immunity actually looks like when we're right in the middle of it. Um, we have had great discussions this week about what it means to be vaccine eligible. And we've had these conversations just this week. Um, in fact, this week, while one vaccine was approved for ages 12 through 15, um, what an incredible time to be talking about Hilleman's contributions to immunization. That's fantastic. Marty, I'll turn to you. My third grade students have been very engaged in this unit. Um, they love the hands-on activities and some of them we've actually even adapted into full motor tag games. Um, I'm truly amazed at how much material they are retaining. Um, this group of amazing educators here helped me come up with some lessons that I feel op offer the students the opportunity to learn about an important scientist, important information about how we can help our bodies fight diseases, important lasting interests in museums, but most importantly, I think they're learning the important concept that they can actually make a difference in the world, just like Maurice Hillman did. That's fantastic. Chiyoko, how about you? Yeah, uh, throughout, um the pandemic, I'm finding that our students need to know more molecular biology, um, especially the importance of major macromolecules of life uh, and how they actually affect cells. For example, how animal viruses can hide themselves using a fatty envelope kind of blends in with our fatty cells and we don't really recognize them. Um, and our students, they, they typically do learn a lot about macromolecules, but this curriculum gives them that perfect context to reinforce those lessons. Um, so we can look at them in a new light, like when they are within an actual body. Um, so it's, I think it, it'll be a good curriculum for science students. Um, also, this lesson gives our students uh, more access to studies, current studies, recent studies, um, and more data. So um, we want to see students doing more data-driven science. Um, so collaborating with our math teacher helps students understand the data better, and it illuminates just how important our 
math program is to our science program. Uh, we have other museum professionals, maybe some educators tuning in again, who may want to start a partnership or, um, or build on a partnership they have with a local school. Uh, and I'm looking for what advice in going through this process um, once or a few times between Ecolaca Public Schools and Carter County Museum and working together, what advice would you offer to museum professionals in particular who wanna begin partnering more closely with their local schools to build programs? So Sharon, I'll start with you again. What advice would you offer? Well, uh, Carter County Museum is already a hub in our community, so it wasn't hard to continue to develop a relationship that was already full of trust. Um, I would say, though, that encouraging tours of our museum by first bringing kits of educational mater materials from the museum to the classroom, whether those whether that kit is delivered by museum staff or by the classroom teacher, they provide an initial connection to the museum, which does foster more experiences in the museum by both students and teachers. They frequently follow up by visiting on their own. Great. Marty, how about you? What advice would you offer out to museum professionals? Well, I think if museums want to partner with schools, just ask. Teachers are always excited to, and to work on educational programming with museums. Um, we're looking for ways to engage our students in meaningful, impactful learning opportunities. Um, a lot of times it feels like we are competing with technology, um, but our kids are hungry for knowledge and particularly about how our world works and what better place to learn that from a museum. So when museums support classrooms and classrooms support museums, everybody wins. Yeah, that's great. Chioko, anything you want to add? Yeah, I would just say um, if you are the museum and you have something cool coming to your museum, you know, invite, invite some students, ask one of your teachers, would you like to bring a class in and just get them in there? Great. Saver, I'm going to put you on the spot and pass it back to you as a museum professional um, and in building this relationship. Anything that hasn't been said that you want to add about how to build partnerships with, with your local school? I think that our educators put it really well. Uh, I would like to add the Carter County Museum has started from the ground up as an educational institution. Our second director was the science teacher at the high school for 50 years. Uh, well, 50 years at the museum and then also at the high school. And what was really fantastic about that experience is that the kids that are growing up in Ecolaca to get today have parents that were taught by him and grandparents that were taught by him. And just being able to establish in the here and now that sort of legacy, it's worth it. So talk to your teachers, talk to your friends and family, and really put it out there in the community. Make it collaborative, make it fun. Thank you. Great. Great. Uh, well, Saber, Sharon, Chioko, and Marty, thank you all so much for your time today and all your hard work on this really impressive curriculum. Uh, on behalf of all my colleagues, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angie.